Hello, and welcome to Creature Modeling for Games in Maya. I'm Justin Marshall, and over the next few hours, we'll go through the process of creating a creature model for use in real-time applications like video games. We'll do this using the concept sculpt created in the previous course. We'll start by learning to output a highly detailed version of our sculpt that can be used to bake maps and create new geometry. We'll then learn to use several methods in Maya and ZBrush to create more game-optimized pieces of geometry. We will retopologize our meshes using Maya to get pieces that will run in real time and are suitable for receiving baked normal maps. We'll make sure our geometry has UVs so those maps can be baked and textures can be created in Substance Painter in the next course. If you've gone through the previous course, feel free to use your own concept sculpt or you can use the project files included here. Once we're done, we'll have a game res creature model with UVs. Let's begin by learning to decimate our sculpt for use when baking maps and retopologizing meshes. So here we are in ZBrush. As I said, if you've gone through the concept sculpting course, you can use the sculpt that you have. Otherwise, you can use Creature Start, which is included with the project files for this course. This file will be very similar to the result of our concept sculpt, although there might be some slight differences with some of the pieces. So let's start by taking a look at how many polygons we're talking about here with our sculpted mesh. So right now we're working with about 36 million, about 35 and a half million polygons for the total. Uh, number of polygons here. Now that includes a lot of polygons that are hidden, things like polygons of the body that are underneath the jumpsuit, things like that. And there are really too many polygons for us to be able to take this out and use. And the whole point of creating this mesh in this initial lesson is to get something that looks like we want it to look, but has a low enough poly count where we can readily use it in an application like Maya without having any issues. And so our job is to reduce the poly count, but keep the visual fidelity. The good thing though, is that we don't have to worry about topology. All we care about is that it looks right and it has a low enough poly count that we can use it. We don't have to worry about animating it, making deformable geometry or anything like that. And so there's actually a great tool in ZBrush that will allow us to do this. And so we're gonna go up to Z plugin and we're gonna open up Decimation Master. Now it's real it's kind of straightforward going through this. There's a number one section, two and three. And so you can go through this one, two, three, follow along with the steps and be able to decimate your mesh. In the first section, options, you've got freeze borders, keep UVs, use and keep poly paint. Well, we don't have any poly paint, so we don't need to worry about that. We don't actually have or need UVs on this version because this is going to be our source. We'll definitely want UVs on our target meshes, but we don't need UVs for this. The borders are going to be any open portions of the geometry. If you have Dyna meshes that you're, you're doing this on, they're not going to have open borders but some of your geometry might. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. That'll make sure that those borders don't move. And then we're gonna go down to section two. Now, basically you can decimate per subtool or you can decimate everything at once. This pre-processing step isn't the decimation step. It's not gonna damage anything to process all or current. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just pre-process all of the subtools. And so that's gonna to, to go through all the visible subtools and create a cache file that is going to be used to actually do the decimation. So like I said, nothing is happening. This cache files are being created. This could take a little bit longer. It will definitely take longer than the decimation itself. So I'm going to go ahead and hit pre-process all, and it's going to go through all of those sub tools, making those cache files. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run, maybe pause the video and come back as soon as this pre-processing part is done. All right, that didn't take too long. So, Nothing has changed on the model or the geometry, but now ZBrush has sort of a guide on how to deal with the different subtools when it actually comes to decimation. So when we come up to Z plugin and go down to Decimation Master, we can now come down to section three, Decimate. This is where we're actually going to be changing the poly count. And so we can do this on all of the subtools at once, or again, we can do this on one at a time. Just because we did the pre processing on all of them doesn't mean we have to now decimate on all of them. We could choose to do one at a time. And that could be wise because uh, the number that would be good for one piece of geometry may not work exactly the way that you want for another piece. But I think the default of 20% is actually not going to reduce it. It seems like a big number, but visually it's not going to make that much of a difference. And so I think for the 20% initial decimation, we can go ahead and just decimate all. There are also presets down here, and you can also set a custom number, which you can try to get close to. Uh, same thing up here. And so we'll just leave it on 20% and we're going to hit decimate all. And I want you to take a look, not only visually at the, the amount of detail on here that we can see. So looking at kind of some of the smaller details on the head and on the cowl, 
And then if we go into polyframe, you can see how dense some of these pieces are. And so what we're gonna do is decimate a 20%, and this is 20% of the whole. Uh, we're not taking it down by 20%, we're actually taking it down to 20%. And so you can see here, we're at about 35 and a half million. Let's see where we are, uh, a total number of points. Let's see where we are after. Okay, we'll go ahead and say decimate all. And this should actually go pretty quickly because of that cache file. So you can see it kind of going through all of the pieces. All right, now it's done. If you look up here, you can see, wow, our total points are now down to eight and a half million. So if you look on each of these subtools, you can see, okay, this one's down to 1.7 million, and then these are down. And so you can take a look across all of these pieces, and some of these pieces will take better to decimation. A lot of times, if you have organic pieces, those can handle decimation a lot better than something that's more of like a hard surface piece. And so some of these pieces you can come in and actually decimate further. For instance, if we grabbed this piece, if we looked at that, we may be able to take this down and you can go back in and say, okay, now I'm gonna set this to 10%. And it's not 10% of the 20%, it's actually 10% of the total. And so we'll say decimate current. And that's only gonna decimate that particular mesh. Now we're down to 8 million. So we can go through these different pieces. I'm just hitting alt and clicking on the different subtools here. You can see this might be a good spot to be able to reduce this uh, cowl. And so we'll decimate the cowl a little bit more. We'll get rid of that mask. Let's come up to the head and see where we're at on the head. So let's reduce the head a little bit. Take this down to 10. Again, decimate current. Okay, we're down to 6 million. It still looks pretty good. Let's take the body because a lot of the body is actually hidden. And so I'm gonna go 10% on the body as well. And then we can come in here and check some of these other pieces that are listed under the clothes section. We've got a folder here that has some of these uh, pieces in it. Yeah, I think the belt can, can really be reduced. Let's go 5% on the belt. Again, make sure that you, you still have clean lines there, which we do. But you can see that you can really tell the difference and see how you still have the lines, but now you can really see the open areas, whereas some of these other pieces are a little bit more dense. You can see how much denser that is. And so we could come in here, take our hit pieces, and we'll do the same thing at 10% or 5% rather. You can always go back if it takes it down to where you start losing detail. Okay. Take a look at our buckle and see what, what's going on there. Okay, so there's a lot of model detail in that. It's at about 80,000, 80, which seems like a lot. Let's take a look at the, the polyframe. We can probably reduce that a bit more. Let's start with 10. Yeah, we'll go down to 5 on that. Now, some of these pieces you'll notice have kind of lost a little bit and and some of them that's fine because we're going to actually use geometry from maya so for instance these hooks you can see that we've really taken out too much of the geometry so i'm actually going to get rid of these both of these hooks because those are pieces that all we need to do is have the maya version of that the low res version because we didn't do any sculpting on it and same thing on these so i'm going to go ahead and get rid of these and the hinges as well. Go ahead and delete those. Anything that we have in Maya, which we do, and we'll have the project files for you, but when you created this in the last course, uh, these were pieces that we built in Maya. And we didn't do any sculpting on them. Whereas some of these pieces we built in Maya and then we created you know, this entire sculpt. So we'll definitely need to get those out. Let's check our big tooth up here. Pretty good. It's at about, yeah, 17,000. So we're down to a little under 6 million. And so feel free to keep going, get it a little bit lower. You can save this file, but I want to show you how we can export our geometry once we're ready to import that into another application. So there's lots of different ways we can do this. Now, we will eventually want to have different OBJ files for all of these pieces because of the way that we're going to bake the maps. So 
for instance, on the body, we'll want some of these OBJs included in the bake and some of them not. So we want to have the option to use, you know, the jumpsuit and the body, but not the cowl and not the medallion. And so we don't necessarily want everything together for the baking part of it. Uh, when we bring it into Maya, though, we can separate things out however we want to. But I'm going to show you a few ways you can export. So you could export individually. So we could take, for instance, the body, come down to export. And I would turn off groups, subgroups here. And this doesn't matter because the, the mesh is triangulated already. So you could do either way. But you want to make sure that that groups is turned off. And then you would just go to export and you could export that as an OBJ file. And then you'd go through the sub tools and export them as such. We can also do that from Maya as well. So let's just export this as one model just so we can kind of speed things up. So let's go to Z plugin. I'm going to minimize decimation master there. And then we're going to go down to FBX export slash import. And you can see we can choose selected sub tool, visible sub tools, all sub tools. So we'll choose visible. And you can choose to use the 2019 uh, FBX if you need to. You can also choose whether it's a binary or ASCII. Triangles, we want to include layers as blend shapes. We do want to make sure this says Maya Y up. That's the way we want to export it. This isn't a button that gets highlighted. If you click it, it'll actually change to a different orientation. So Marmoset, Unity, Motion Builder, OpenGL, DirectX, LightWave, and then back to my up. So it's kind of a toggle through those choices. We don't have any maps to worry about. Let's move the normals. We can also come down to options and we can see if we want to treat the poly groups as selection sets and things like that. We're going to go ahead and leave all those off. We don't need the cameras and we'll just hit export. So I'm going to save this in the ZBrush files folder and we'll just call this creature decimated.fbx and we'll save that. All right. So now let's jump over to Maya. So once we got Maya open, we need to import our FBX. Let's go to file, import, navigate to our files, and we're going to choose creature decimated.fbx. Go ahead and import that. It take a minute. There's a lot of geometry in there, depending on how far down we decimated it. All right, I'm going to hit A so we can see everything, kind of see what's in here. I'm going to go ahead and grab all of my geometry and see how it all came in separately, even though we did export it as one file. So this is good. I'm going to go ahead and hit control G to group that together. I'm going to call this creature pie and let's make a layer for it. So with it selected, I'm going to come in and create a new layer. We'll call this creature high layer. Go ahead and save that. And now we can turn this layer so that we can't select the geometry, which is what we want. So I'm just going to change this to a reference. And now it's in our scene. You can see it, but we can't select it. So for right now, this is going to serve as a template to build the rest of our geometry on top of. And so this is going to be our sort of decimated version. And then we'll have a version that's going to contain our actual production geometry. In addition, we can use these pieces to actually bake maps in the next course where we go through texture uh, creation. So we'll use the high res pieces that we output here to actually calculate the maps in Substance Painter. But for right now, this is going to be used to create our new geometry. So we'll go ahead and we can save this file. And then in the next lesson, we're ready to go in and start creating some new pieces. So some new pieces we can start in ZBrush and, and do some things to those and output those. Sometimes we can uh, start in Maya. So in the next clip, we'll go ahead and start creating our production geometry.